Hi ladies, welcome back to my channel. On today's video, I'm going to be talking to you guys about starting a relationship with the Lord or restarting a relationship with the Lord. So the most important relationship you will ever have in this life is your relationship with the Lord. So I'm going to go ahead and tell you the five different ways and then we're going to go ahead and break them down one by one. The first one is prayer. The second one is reading the Bible and studying the Bible. The third one is finding a church. The fourth one is thanks and praise. And the fifth one is honoring God, listening and obeying God. So let's talk about prayer, guys. Prayer is so important, but a lot of people either don't understand it or they don't know the power of prayer. The thing is, prayer honestly is simply just communicating with God. Communication is important like in any relationship. So let me go back, let me go back really quick. Um, having a relationship with God honestly is like having a relationship with somebody that you actually do see. I know we don't physically see the Lord, but it's the same type of thing. A relationship is a relationship and certain things need to be cultivated for a good, or should I say for a successful relationship? Yes. Cause we're talking about a relationship with the Lord and we do want our relationship with God to be successful. Okay, so with that being said, communication, that's what prayer is. Prayer is simply communicating or simply talking, you know, with God. Um, some people make it seem a little bit deeper than it really is. And honestly, it's not. If you ask me, it's simply just talking to the Lord or communicating in communication in communicating with somebody. It's a two way thing going on. It's you hearing the person speak and then you also speaking as well, or you speaking first and the person listening and the person chiming in. It's the same type of thing when you want to go to the Lord. I know for me, I'm very real when I talk to the Lord. Um, I talk to God as though you know, he's my best friend right here. Like that's how I can talk to God. I tell him what's really going on. Even in an instance, if I'm going through something or growing through something, I like to say, I'm still talking to God about it the way I would talk to you guys about it or the way I'll talk to, you know, my husband or my best friend about it. That's how I like to explain prayer because prayer is what, again, simply talking to God. So for example, if something's going on with me and I want to tell you guys, the same way I'm going to tell you guys is the same way I would tell God, if not deeper. Why? Because I feel like God is closer to me. The same way you guys have different kinds of relationships. You talk on, in a deeper manner with those that you are closest to, those that can help you, those that truly care about you. And for me, God truly cares about me and he, and he truly cares about every single one, every single one of us. So the little things that you care about, God cares about those little things too. So you can talk to him, have communication with God. That's always to me the first thing about starting a relationship or even rekindling a relationship. A lot of times when you guys rekindle relationships with other people, all of us even, when we rekindle older relationships that we're no longer in, it starts with what? Communication. It starts with you talking to that person again. Okay, so let's be... Let's be clear on that. Um, prayer is not something that's so deep, you know? Prayer is simply communicating with God. Yes, you guys can have deep conversations, you know what I mean? Like sometimes you and your friend, you have deep conversations. It's the same thing with God. You can have deep conversations with him. You can tell him, um, you know, God, this is what I'm going through. I don't really want to tell anybody. I need you to help me with this. And you will notice God will really truly help you with whatever that thing is. So communication is very important. For those of you saying, oh, maybe I don't know how to pray. I don't know how to communicate with God. The Bible tells you in Matthew, Matthew 6, 9 through 13. That's the Lord's prayer. It's familiar to some of you guys. And for those that it's not familiar to, I'm going to go ahead and say it. It simply says our Father who art in heaven, holy is your name, your kingdom come, your will be done in the earth as it is in heaven. Lord, please give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lord, please lead us not into temptation, but deliver us, Lord, from all evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory is all yours, Lord, now and forever. Amen. So within that prayer, there's so many good things in it. You guys, it's packed with so many things. And even for me personally, when I go to pray, I actually break it down. 
I break it down and we're going to talk about that more. I have my notes right here, so we're going to talk about it more. But I break it down. Um, our Father who art in heaven, holy is your name. So I know at the beginning of prayer, I praise him. Holy are you, O Lord. You're a good God. You're a great God. You're a mighty God. You're a powerful God. You know, I praise him. And even if you're not at the place where you understand that, you know, just pray it. Because it says it in the Bible, pray it. And before you know it, you're going to notice things will change. Things will happen. Okay? So pray. prayer is simply communicating with God. Start communicating with Him. You can start right now. If um, you stop communicating with Him, start back up communicating with Him. There is so much to tell Him. Like when you are in a relationship or you're trying to get in a relationship with somebody, you call them all the time. You check up on them. You know what I mean? You say good things about them. You're constantly talking to them. So please remember that the first one is prayer, communicating with God. Make sure you are communicating with God on a daily basis. It might seem, um, I don't want to say difficult, but it might seem weird at first. Like I don't even know if that's the right word because it's not really weird because um, when you're starting to talk to someone, like we always say, oh, we're talking such and such as talking, you really start by what? Talking. So you may not talk all the time at the beginning, but you try to get to know that person more. And it's the same thing with God. You want to talk to him. You want to begin to get to know him more. Okay. The second one is reading and studying the Bible. I'm going to go ahead and give you guys a verse so you can better understand what I'm going to talk about. The verse I want to give you guys is John 1, 1. It says, in the beginning was the word, meaning the Bible, the word was with God and the word was God. The word was God. The word was God, meaning God is his word. God is the Bible. If you want to get to know God, get to know his word, get to know the Bible. You will see the characteristics. You will see everything about God in the Bible. So it's important in getting to um, getting to know him or rekindling your relationship with him. It is important for you to read the word also known as the Bible, okay? And I'm only saying that because some people know when they hear the word that, that means the Bible, whereas others, are they don't know what that means. So I'm just clarifying it that way. So in the beginning was the word, the word was with God and the word was God. So for us starting a relationship or rekindling a relationship with the Lord, you have to get to know him. Same thing like we just talked about in any relationship or when you want to get to know someone, what do you do? You begin to inquire about them. You begin to find out things about them. You ask them a whole bunch of questions. You want to make sure that person is a good person. You want to make sure that person, you know, will mesh well with you. So same thing in this case, as you're getting to know God or as you are um, rekindling the flames with God, you have to get to know him again, or you have to simply get to know him. So he is his word. So that is how you get to know him. And then another verse I want to go ahead and go over with you guys is Joshua 1, 8. Joshua 1, 8. Where, where did I put you? <laughs> Give me one second. Joshua 1, 8 says, this book of the law must not depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything that is written in it. For then you will prosper and have good success, right? So with that being said, right, it gives us a whole bunch of things we have to do. So this tells us exactly what we need to do to be successful and to be prosperous, right? We have to meditate on the word when, day, in the morning, guys, and night. So that's before you go to bed, right? So I like having instructions, let me be honest. To me, the Bible sometimes is an instructor's manual, right? God created us. And he wants us to do things a certain way. And I would say he wants us to do things in a certain way out of protection because he knows what's best for us. So he's, he's, he's giving us instructions in his word, in the Bible. He's giving us instructions on, on how to have a successful life, how to live life, how he wants us to live it so that we will be prosperous, so that we will enjoy it. So reading the word 
benefits your relationship with, with Christ, with, with the Lord, but it also benefits your your life you know what i mean there's so much in it every question there's an answer in the word there's an answer from god you know he has um a way of speaking to his children he knows how to do that so the more you talk to him the more you get to know him the more you will hear from him from him and the clearer and clearer that you you will hear from him same thing in a relationship when you're entering the relationship um Somebody might not tell you everything about them. Like me, when my husband was getting to know me at the beginning stages, I didn't tell him everything about me. Oh, no, no, no. Because you have to, um, you know, tread lightly. You have to get to know that person. The good thing about this relationship with the Lord is he knows everything about you already. You know what I mean? He knows everything about you already. It's about you getting to know him and him even telling you more about you. You know what I mean? So, yes, guys, this relationship will by far be the best relationship you ever have. Trust me, okay? Um, so yeah, meditating on the word day and night. You know, not allowing the word to depart from your mouth. So that will... That means what? You still have to read the word because you have to know what to not allow depart from your mouth. You know, you have to read the word to get to know the Lord. But also the word to me I have written down here is, um, is a... A guide almost it is a blueprint for your life it is a road map right it tells you where to go so God will tell you where to go he has a specific plan for your life he has something that he, he has so much for you you know what I mean so it's very important that you cultivate this relationship with God um, you need a blueprint to go anywhere so why wouldn't you think that you need a blueprint to maneuver through life. God has given us the blueprint to maneuver through life. So make sure you're reading your word. Read your word daily. Meditate on it day and night. Okay, guys? So yeah, let me move on to the next one because that, I don't know, that to me is just such a beautiful thing that God thought of us so deeply and so lovingly that he created a guide for us. So let's get into that guide to see how we should live this life. Sometimes we're confused. We don't know what to do. We don't know where to go. We have a blueprint. He has given it to us. So let's begin to open it up. Okay, guys. The next point is thanks and praise. Thanking the Lord and praising him are very are key components components should I say in your relationship with the Lord thanking him everybody wants gratitude everybody if you do something for somebody you want them to tell you thank you it's the same thing with the Lord if you if, if not if he does something for you he does stuff for us all the time whether we acknowledge it or not certain things to be honest we even take for granted because um, they're readily available for us not realizing that some don't even have what you have so being thankful is important. And a verse that I want to share with you guys that even makes that even all the more clear is Psalms 104. Psalms 104 says, into my gates with thanksgiving and onto my courts with praise. What does that tell you? When you approach the Lord, when you are um, entering, you know what I mean? Entering that relationship for this, you know, example, but entering, entering that space with God into his gates, you know, in enter. So go in and you thank him. When you get into your place, your quiet place with God, you enter in there first thanking God. Thank him for everything. Thank you, Lord, for waking me up this morning. Thank you, Lord, that you care for me. Thank you, Lord, for another day. Thank you for waking up my family. Thank you, Lord, for what you did, what you're doing, and what you're going to do, oh God. Thank you for your loving kindness, your tender mercies, your forgiveness, your understanding. Like just thanking God, there's so much to thank. Thank God for. Thank you, Lord, for a sound mind. Thank you, Lord, that I am in one piece. Thank you, Lord, that you care for me. Thank you that you care about what I care about, oh God. There's so many things to thank God for. And even right now, I want to thank him. Thank God for you guys. You know what I mean? Thank him for everything. You can just begin to look around. Thank you, Lord, for this house that I'm in. Thank you for the air that I breathe, oh Lord. You know, there's so much to thank God for. 
So you always want to start prayers with thanking God. The word says, into enter my gates with thanksgiving and onto my courts with praise. So there's so much even to praise the Lord about, you know. I praise you, God, for you are worthy, Lord, of all praise, of all glory, and of all adoration. You are God of God, Lord of the Lord, and King of kings. You are Alpha and Omega, the beginning, the end, the creator, O Lord, of the heavens, the earth, the oceans, and everything within. Father God, there is absolutely nothing too hard for you. There's absolutely nothing you can't do. And if you guys have heard me pray, you know I always enter this way. I enter his gates with thanksgiving, and I'm always on. I like to be on on his course with praise. That's very important. It says it in the word. And if you may not know these things about God, it's in the blueprint. It's in the Bible. Like you begin to read these things about him. The Psalms are really good reading the Psalms in the Bible. P-S-A-L-M. <laughs> um, reading that part of the Bible really tells you about the different parts of God because we know God is multifaceted. Is that the right word, guys? <laughs> guys, is that the right word? But God has so many, I mean, it can be very complex, you know, because there's so much to God. There really is, but he's great. If you don't know anything else about God, know that he is great. Know that he is awesome. Know that he is powerful. Know that he is mighty. And when you begin to read the word or reread the word, you'll begin to see it. You'll begin to see it. You'll be begin to know the things that he does. Always remember this. God is not a respecter of persons. If he did it for one, he can't wait to do it for you too. You know, um, if he blessed one, he wants to bless the other. He is not a respecter of persons. He's truly a great God. Okay. So when you're reading the word and you're seeing the different things that he's doing for people in the word, in the word, in the Bible, he is that same God. He's, he's, the same. He doesn't change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So if he did it for them, he can do it for you as well. Remember that. So when you're thanking him, thank him even for what he's going to do for you because it's already done. Thank him for what he's going to do for you. Thank him even for what he did for you. Thank you for what he's currently doing for you. Those are areas in which you can thank him for. And then praising him. If you see something great or you know of something great that he did, praise him for it because he is great. He is mighty. He is powerful. Okay. Another thing I wanted to say about thanking God and praising God is for me, I see that personally as a place of intimacy, that God is letting you in, you know what I mean? Like into your gates with thanksgiving and onto his course with praise. I feel like that's a place where he's letting you in. And also when you're telling somebody good things, that is a place of intimacy. At least I feel that way. Like you're, you're praising him. Um, you're thanking him. You're saying all these good things about him and to him. So to me, I like that's a place of intimacy so remember God letting you in is a beautiful thing and don't forget to thank him for everything and praise him for who he is okay let's move on to the next one the next one I will say is honoring God listening to God and obeying God um Listening to God to me is all a part of communication because in communication, like we said before, it's a two way thing. Um, you speak, the person speak, you know, you speak, the person listens and then the person speaks and then you listen. Um, so listening to God is very important. Um, it's not just you doing all the talking, 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 talking. Um, a lot of times we do do a lot of talking and not that there's anything wrong with that, but make sure you're also being quiet, Get in, getting into a still place or in a still posture, posture. Whereas if you want to, if God wants to say something to you, you're open to hearing it and not just you talking all the time um it can be difficult but the at, the at the beginning but the more you begin to cultivate this relationship the more you begin to um should i say go deeper in the relationship the more you begin to do these things that i've listed and i'm talking to you guys about the more you begin to notice when god talks to you you begin to um hear that voice like you know what i mean like you'll begin to know when it's god okay um, so that's listening. The next one I said was obeying. Um, obeying is a part of listening. When you feel God leading you in a certain direction or when you feel God talking to you um, about a certain thing or you know that God is trying to get your attention or you get that feeling that God puts on the inside of you um, at a certain point when something is occurring, um, 
be obedient. Listen, do what God is leading you to do. If he's putting that overwhelming, because sometimes it comes as a feeling, as an overwhelming feeling of, of joy or, or of um, this is what I need to do. You can pinpoint that feeling at, at, at a time, you know, at times, but that, oh my gosh, I have to do this. You know, that overwhelming feeling of, um, of the Lord, I'm going to say, or the spirit within you, because we know God lives within us. So when you get those, those um, I don't want to say inklings or those of the Lord speaking to you, that's what I call it, you know, um, or you're being moved by the spirit, listen, obey, do it, do what you are moved by the, by the spirit um, to do. And a way to check that is make sure it aligns with the word of God, because sometimes people will say that, oh, they, they're moved to do this or that. If it doesn't align with the word, it's not God. Because like we talked about, God is his word. So make sure it aligns with his word. If it does not align with his word, it is not him, period. Okay? And then honoring God. That's a part of what I just said even. Honoring God that his word weighs to you more than anything else. His word is bigger than what mommy says. His word is bigger than what daddy says. His word is bigger than what auntie, uncle, husband says. Like, um, now I'm not saying, hear me out here. I'm not saying that you're not going to listen to your mom. You're not going to listen to your dad or your husband. You know what I mean? That you're not going to honor anybody else. But God's word needs to trump everything. Okay? God's word must come first. You must honor the Lord. Do what the, that you know the Lord is telling you to do. Okay? Um, that is not the last one. The last one is um, finding a church. But before I, I talk, I go into finding a church, I do want to say that the more you, you know, do these things that I have listed here for you, the more you pray, the more you read your word, the more you thank and praise the Lord, the more you honor God and listen to God and obey the God and, and, and or <laughs> sorry, guys, and obey God the more your relationship will strengthen itself. Same thing going back to a, a relationship in the natural. The more, like for me um, in my marriage, the more I listen to my husband, the more our communication is, is um, you know, doing what it's supposed to do. Like the more we're communicating, the better our communication gets. The more we spend time with us, I notice the stronger our relationship and our bond gets. Um, the more we understand each other, um, the more the intimacy is and the more we love on each other, if you understand what I'm saying. It's the same thing in the spiritual. The more you pray and communicate with the Lord, your communication will get better. The more you listen to him, the more you obey him, the more you honor him, he will speak to you more. He will, um, you begin to know him all the more and get close and have that intimate relationship with him. So I want you to remember that that does not happen overnight. Can it happen overnight? I'm sure. But um, what I'm saying is cultivate a successful relationship with the Lord. Start a good relationship with the Lord. Start it again. Restart a relationship with the Lord. Um, because that, like I said, is the most important relationship you will ever have in your life. And I mean that truly. Okay. And last but not least is find a church. A lot of people forget the importance of going to church or finding a church. Mind you, I do understand we are in a pandemic, but some churches are still open and they're um, doing the regulations, putting the regulations in place that need to be in place. And also some churches like my church also has, we meet in person, but we also have an e-church. So that's very important. Find a church. There are a lot of churches online and that are not meeting, but there's also churches that meet and are online and also have an online church church system okay that's very important so not so us being in a pandemic is not a reason for you to not go to church um let's not forget the lord also talks about that do not uh, forsake the assembly and it says it let me get this out guys um hebrews i know where is it where is it yes hebrews ten twenty five. it says and let us not neglect our meeting together. Let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. 
I'm going to repeat that. And let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do. Don't let that some people be you, okay? Do not neglect the meeting together. Whether it's online or whether it's in person, make sure you are meeting together, okay? Um, with the body of Christ, that is. Um, also, finding a church is also important because God gives us pastors. He gives us shepherds after his own heart. The Lord knows what his children need, okay? I know with me, the Lord showed me in a dream where to go. I knew, I was already going to another church, but God began to show me some things and he showed me some things he wanted me to do. You know, so for me, I was able to know where to go. So same thing with you, pray, the Lord will show you where to go. But don't just pray and do nothing now. Try different places, see where you fit in, see the place for you. Pray about it and also make a move about it as well. Because with you going to church, um, the person that God or the pastor, the you know, whoever it is God has, that's going to be a pastor after his own heart. That's going to be the person he puts it in place to spiritually parent you. That's very important. So even with our parents, they lead us and guide us. Yes, God has given us to our parents, but it's for a purpose. They're the person to rear us up. They're the person to lead us and guide us in life until we get to a place where we can do it. You know what I mean? And even when you get to that place, like now I'm a, I'm an adult, I still call my dad. I still need my mom for certain things. Like, you know what I mean? It is what it is, but at the same time, with God, he wants to give you spiritual parents. He wants to give you people that will guide you in his word, people that will teach you about the word. Same way um, our parents had to teach us certain things about you know, the world, life. Same thing with our spiritual parents. They're supposed to teach us about life too, um, how God wants us to live life. Um, so that's very important. You have to have spiritual parents and they will lead you and guide us in the thing and, and guide you in the things of God. And they will teach you certain things because some days I will be in my Bible, you know, and there's certain things that I may not understand, especially when I was, you know, younger in Christ, just getting started myself. So many things I didn't understand. To be honest, the Bible was confusing at a certain point, you know, except for the things that were clear, clear, clear to me. But I had guidance. I was told, okay, read this version until you get to this place so you can read this version. You know, just having spiritual guidance guidance is very important and that happens in a church so make sure you find yourself a church so those are the five points guys prayer reading the bible and studying the bible thanking and praising god honoring god listening and obeying god and finding a church home now let's let me throw this in there as well when it comes to these points um, don't feel overwhelmed, just start slowly. And the best way to put these things into place is by being organized about it. Have a place and a time that you want to meet with God every day. It doesn't have to be some long duration of time. Honestly, you start out where you are and you'll notice as your relationship grows, you're going to be putting more time in it. Same thing with the, in the natural. When you're starting a relationship with somebody, you don't spend all your time with that person. But the closer you get, you want to be around that person so much more and the relationship grows from there. It's the same thing in cultivating a relationship or recall cultivating a relationship with the Lord. Okay. Um, is there anything I'm missing? No, that's it right now, to be honest, but we will explore more things concerning growing our relationship with the Lord and the things concerning our spirit. Okay, guys. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Make sure you comment and make sure you share, guys. You never know. This video can bless somebody else in the same way it blessed you. And don't forget, if you live to love, you would love to live. Bye, guys.